Well, I'm on the farm here uh, today and uh, at the Massey 1105 out there and the Crone 2801 uh, 2801CV mower conditioner. And uh, my last video or a previous video, I cut this and uh, it's drying nicely. It's cool. When I say cool, it's in the upper 70s. The low 80s which is nice it's really breezy almost windy sometimes and a lot of sunshine so i'm expecting a really nice dry down between that and the conditioning on the stems and we're going to move down to our low ground and cut that uh, so that'll be the topic of today's video and then we're going up on the hill and do a little hay cutting up there. That right there is a fine combo. Those two, those two were made for each other. 77 Massey Ferguson 1105 and the uh, Crone 2801 CV. It's uh, almost nine foot. It's right at nine foot uh, cut. Disc mower with impeller, tying conditioners. I'll flip them around and show you the conditioners uh, for those that are new to the channel and maybe those that are old to the channel. So right there is the impeller tines, and uh, they do a great job of uh, conditioning the the grass, the stems especially, when we cut hay. The dry down is unbelievable. That's an amazing thing. I don't know what I'm gonna do when this tractor gets where it won't start. Well, I brought the crone up here. I thought maybe this tire was a little bit low, but I think it was just the way it was setting. The, the sidewall wall was kind of mashed down like that, but I think it was just the way it was setting out there in that field. So uh, it's okay, but it had me concerned a little bit because we have a unique ability up here to find more nails with tires than we do with a magnet. Got the crone opened up and I'm uh, motoring my way out here to the far end of the field to make my grand entrance into it. From uh, another video, the, the AC is out on the uh, 1105. I think I need it charged, but really don't have time to deal with it here. So I've got the window propped open there, propped this one open. It's not too bad. If the windows are closed, you might as well uh, put a thermometer on because you're going to get cooked like a turkey. But we'll get the AC going here by hook or crook at some point. Continuing to cut. kind of watching for limbs. <laughs> I've been down along the perimeter with my farm all and the bush all, kind of scouting this field, but we had a hard storm I alluded to in another video. So it's hard to say what might be down in here. Now this ground has always grown good hay down here in the shade. The sun comes up and sets over that way. And I'm convinced the reason is it's, it's just not getting the direct sunlight and being cold, cool season grasses. It prefers a little bit of shade at the uh, beginning of the day or in the middle of the day. Just kind of watching carefully 
or a big old limb that could wreck my disc mower. I kind of like coming down in here with my sickle, but I know a lot of people get along with uh, a straight disc mower. We've always had humidity off of these stems and a little bit of dust on our hay. So it's really essential for us to uh, use a conditioner. Now, if I'm making round bales where the money is just not there, then I, in, in a lot of ways, I could care less if somebody's going to stick me for a low ball price on a round bale, then, you know, I'm inclined to give them whatever's commensurate with the price. But I can, uh, I can bail up the trashiest hay in squares and still sell it for more than I can get out of a rail bail. But you see how tall this grass is? And, and when it was in Timothy and we were fertilizing heavy, this was an impressive little field for hay. I'm hoping to get back there at some point. So I'll come back. So at some point, I want to get these trees out of the middle of this field. Uh, this field was overgrown until about 10 years ago. And uh, when I was a boy, it was a pasture. But we, uh, we left the trees thinking it would, it would just look nice, and it does. But you know, we get a, a nice little crop of limbs every year, and it just really makes it harder to bale hay around them. So I feel like they gotta go. We got enough trees up there and out along here. I think we can do without some of these. So that's on the list for one of these days. I guess I'll get to it. So I'm running today in uh, Low range, third gear, a multi-power high. And then when I get out around some of these obstacles, I'll slow it down to multi-power low. Not in a real big hurry. This hay up here, I'll dead that out tonight. And it may ready, be ready to bail tomorrow, we'll see. Between the sun and the rain and the conditioning, these impeller tines, I can't tell you how effective they are at grass hay of conditioning the, uh, the stems. And I don't even have it set as close as I could. Some people set the tines on a crone impeller so that they touch the conditioning hood. And I'll slow it down right here because I'm gonna be watching for limbs off that tree. But They'll, they'll, they'll set the tines so that they touch the conditioning hood and then they'll back it off just a, just a smudge so that it's not making any contact. And so uh, they're really getting a lot of, they're really working that hay when they do that against that conditioning hood. I've always had mine set about one inch off the hood. And so volume flows through. I don't know, I can't imagine I'd want hay conditioned any better than what I get from that arrangement. So yeah, low range, uh, third gear, and then multi-power load, kind of making my way around these obstacles right here. Not a big field, I'm not in a hurry. I think as I mentioned on one of my other videos, I'm on vacation this week. So we got a lot going on in addition to just mowing hay and uh, with the family. This uh, crone and the Massey 
I know I sound like a commercial, but it's really impressive, this combo. I think you can see the grass is really waving in the wind. It's just the ideal drying weather, I think. Now we got the croon set at the high stubble, about five inches. And uh, that helps with the recovery, but it also, uh, you know, if we encounter a rock or a stick or something, we're kind of up off of it. I cut my east field pretty close. I really don't like to do that. But up here and down in here and everywhere else, we're going to cut at basically a maximum cutting height. So I'm making my way through this field, but right now I'm having to deal with mowing around these trees and stuff left where you can't make the turn. And uh, when I break into the open, it's not too bad, but that's why these trees have got to go. We just need a clean field all the way back through there. Alright, so I finished that field. It was right tedious trimming around those trees, but I got it. And uh gonna be a goodly little goodly amount of hay in there. I'm ready now to move up on the hill. That'll be a different video. Uh the uh Massey Ferguson 1105 did a nice job and the crone. Just kind of took my time, didn't get in any big rush. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share. More haying uh, coming. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you later.